Thank you. the situation felt like it would ease up in a month or so it's been a few months the end seems nowhere in sight and we have always already started talking about a new normal in some parts of the country and rest of the world as well the equation between parents and schools have changed somewhat we have reports of various schools where parents have taken firm stands even to the extent of legal harassment of schools and one question that keeps on coming up is has then the emotion towards the school that a parent has changed over time has the kind of emotional bonding that schools used to enjoy with school with their parents and students has that eroded somehow again i say this has happened in very very limited cases in some far reaches of the country but i believe it's a question that still needs answering today's topic i love my school we are going to answer the question what is it that forms that firm bond between a school and the parent or the child we have with us a stellar set of speakers today so without keeping you from the speaking let me proceed but before i do that i will take just a minute to tell you a little bit about notebook we at notebook are an edtech brand we make short crisp videos for every topic present in the school curriculum what this means is teachers when they are starting a class have the benefit of playing a video that augments their teaching the objective is never to substitute the teacher but only to provide them with a teaching aid that perhaps bring all the students on the same level where they can visualize exactly what is being taught to them let me play that video for you now We can't hear anything. Yeah. Is the audio not uh, playing? Audio is not on. Sorry, ma'am. I'll just yes. start that once again. My apologies. All of you must have heard about Superman. Today I'll tell you a story of a superwoman who made all of us proud and her name is Sunita Williams, an astronaut. Hello and welcome to Notebook students. The vast night sky and the sparkling stars amaze us always. But none of us know what exactly is the night sky. Come, let's take a journey to the space today. Do you know what an astronaut is? Just as you have crew members of an aircraft, an astronaut is the crew member of a spacecraft. Sunita Williams is an American astronaut who set records on her two journeys to the International Space Station, ISS. Ever wondered how the flight to the space may feel like? Let's see how Sunita did. She could never sit at one place. Floating around the spacecraft must be an amazing experience. The water too used to float. Moreover, can you imagine people floating all around the spacecraft to catch their food packets, which are also floating? Funny, isn't it? Another funny part is the hair. 
she never had to comb her hair as it always remained straight can you tell me the reason of all these happenings well students it's because earth pulls everything towards it this is called the pull of gravity so more we move away from the earth the lesser the pull gets if you take a globe in your hand and check the shape of the earth what do you see it is the shape of a ball and we humans all live on the surface of the ball and not inside the ball so isn't it a wonder that we all living and non living beings keep clinging to the surface of the earth it is all the magic of the pull of the earth sunita described how lovely our very own earth looked from the spaceship the beautiful round ball as it appeared from the window of the spaceship stunned sunita and her co-workers the country borders are not visible from there only the land and the seas can be identified we find two little kids Shahmir and Nazera in our chapter they were super happy to meet Sunita Williams who came to India and you know why did she come to India it was because her dear friend Kalpana Chawla requested her you must have heard about Kalpana Chawla she was the first person of indian origin who flew to space what a great achievement isn't it so we will pause that video here i think this gives you a fair idea of the approach we take this is part of a five and a half minute video for class 5 evs chapter sunita in space well i won't keep you any more from the pit that you've been waiting for and introduce our first speaker for today our first speaker today is mr philip barrett mr barrett retired as the deputy headmaster from the illustrious doon school in dehradun after 44 years of serving in education across various institutions he served the doon school as a housemaster head of department dean of student welfare dean of activities deputy headmaster second master and acting headmaster with great distinction he also carried out a visioning exercise for the doon school in the year 2011 through an in-depth study of a number of british public schools and various schools in the us mr barrett qualified as a leadership trainer at wellington college in uk in the year 2000 he is also an athlete an adventurer and a naturalist sir it's a privilege to have you with us over to you Thank you very much, Shubayu. I hope I am audible, Shubayu. Yes, sir. Loud and clear. The 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 connectivity here is a bit dodgy today. We've got an overcast sky, so I hope I am going to be uh, clear through. Um, well, uh, I love my school. Um, I was a student, and I then became a teacher. So I'm going to break this talk up into two parts: uh, my school, the school I studied in, and the school I taught in eventually. So my father, being an army. officer i moved to six schools in the first uh, up to the age of 11 almost and then i joined the bishop school pune uh, which was my school for the last 4 years uh, we did the senior cambridge exam uh, it was a school that did not stress too much on academics we didn't need it at that stage there were plenty of jobs around but there was a lot of camaraderie a lot of sport there was a huge sense of discipline Uh, a lot of our teachers were Anglo-Indian uh, gentlemen. We also had a lot of uh, non-Anglo-Indian teachers. Um, they used to cane us, but there was no malice. There was never any malice. We were not. Our parents were not helicopter parents. Nobody interfered with what the school did. And uh, I think it was because of the wonderful life I had at school that I desired to be a teacher myself, because I saw the commitment that these gentlemen had to their job. i just wanted the life that these teachers offered um we i played i played uh, at i was i was an athlete i was a boxer and i remember traveling and touring with my school teams to panchgani to satara nasik egetpuri and bringing home my mother you know wild honey and chickpeas the school taught me a lot of accountability i i i started becoming accountable and responsible for myself um my teachers cared for me these were not times when you had counselors and and therapy sessions in class nothing of the sort you know i was a nail biter but my teacher took me aside and tried to help me get off the habit another teacher taught me how to drive the school car um 
another teacher took me under his wing to teach me some, you know, English in his spare time. These were, these were men who, who, who were dedicated. Um, I joined the Scouts, the Boy Scouts, and I remember, you know, my night camps up in the Western Ghats amidst pouring rain, reading maps, uh, living with leeches. The school taught me a number of things, punctuality, commitment, commitment. When I promised to do something, I learned to do it. I learned to say no. My headmaster taught me a simple word. When you want to say no, you say it. I see a lot of children today who like to say no, but can't. And it taught me resilience. You know, I had to go home using a bus, a train, and then probably walk two mile, uh, you know, two kilometers home. It was tiring, but this was what school taught me to, to take the good with the bad, uh, you know, to, to fight and not to heed the wound, to toil and not to seek for rest. That was one of our prayers. So eventually I moved on from school and I, I, I trained to be a teacher in Bombay and I went to two to three schools and I taught in Bombay and Delhi. And eventually I came to the school uh, that I dreamt of and uh, which was my home for almost 33 years, which was the Dune School in Dehradun. Now uh, this school is arguably you know, India's top residential school. Um, it was set up in 1935 to serve a free and democratic India. Uh, the national anthem uh, of the country was the school song before it became the national anthem. It was a Tagore uh, made song. And uh, uh, the school stood for, um, it, it was there to produce Indian boys who would lead a free democratic India. Uh, our founder, who was a barrister in England, uh, wanted to put up one of the best schools for Indian boys along the lines of the British public schools, but it was solely for Indian boys. The Doon School is beautifully located uh, in a 70-acre campus. Uh, it's beautifully sylvan, and because it was the old Forest Research Institute, we only have 500 boys and 70 staff who all live in this pristine campus. And um, <clears throat> the Missouri Hills in the back were form a backdrop and the early, um, the snows in Jan and February uh, make a beautiful backdrop to the cricket pitches that we, that we played on. And with an easy access to the school are some of the best treks and streams to raft down and plenty of other schools in the valley to compete with in sport. Um, <clears throat> The school has a pan-India flavor, which means that we get boys from all over the country to study at school. So it is a mini India in a way. It's a very house-centric school. We have five houses and run by a housemaster. I myself was a housemaster. And we housemasters are like a father to these boys that we are with. And many a boy has said that, look, there are only two men in my life who matter. And that is my housemaster and my father in that order. And there was a lot of house spirit. We have our own cheering songs and we have our own house traditions and house feasts. We eat together, but eventually we are a part of a bigger school. The school is also a very secular school. We don't have any single denomination. We're not allowed to fast, but we respect all religions. All forms of prayer are said at assembly, mostly Christian prayers, I might add, but a lot of uh, prayers from other denominations, a lot of Sufi prayers, a lot of uh, prayers from the from uh, from other traditions. The school is extremely egalitarian. You know, we have poor children on a hundred percent scholarship, and we have some of the richest and the most famous sions of industry here. They wear the same uniform, sleep on the same beds, follow the same routine, and staff and boys eat the same food cooked in the same kitchen. It's, it's surprising that you know. Many, many, many journalists have come here to, you know, to, to make films on some of the great people who've passed out here and are surprised to know and see where these famous men have slept. Just simple steel bed. It's a very austere, very Spartan dormitory that these boys live in. The outside world thinks it's a very elitist school, but you want to see this place to believe it. The school believes in a lot of internationalism. 
We have foreigners inside and outside the school. They come in as student exchange, as, uh, you know, faculty exchanges. We have the round square, the MUN. I myself have been out uh, on school visits uh, to almost every uh, continent. Uh, the school sends people out all the time. Um, it's a very holistic a program that we have here. And the boys are spoiled for choice. I mean, from robotics, one end of the extreme, to 3D printing, to music, to motor mechanics, everything. We have 11 publications in this school. And a lot of these activities are staff and teacher led. If a teacher is keen on bird watching, there'll be a bird watching club. If he's interested in catching snakes, there'll be a you know, serpentarium club. And uh, it is all driven by the interest of the teacher who lives on the campus. The school practices leadership and democracy. Everything about the school is democratic. Not only the election of the captains and the prefects, but there are councils that run the school. There are house councils, library councils, mess councils, sports committees. And the boys are trained to, to, to take minutes, to argue, to debate, and, and, to, and not take things sitting down. Uh, Finally, um, it's a school that believes a lot in service. Um, service is at the core of this school. And <clears throat> we, we have boys here who have helped out every possible um, tragedy in this country. And I, I keep saying to people that if ever you're in trouble, please reach out to a DOSCO and he'll be there to help. Um, the school believes a lot in protecting the environment. And the boys love nature because we live in a 70 acre forest, if you like. I have never seen boys harm or maim or injure plants or trees. There is hardly any vandalism or graffiti. They, they love tree planting. We have solar heating. We have paper recycling. It's a paperless school. We have no fires on campus. It's a no smoking campus. We have compost pits, vermiculture, organic farming, everything. You know, we, we, we instill the love of a clean environment in the school and adventure. You know, the school, as I said, it's beautifully located in terms of outdoors. And some of our early headmasters uh, climbed Everest, climbed Comet. You know, so the history of Indian mountaineering is closely linked up with, the his, with, with mountaineering as it was at the Dune School. And uh, I lived 35, 30, 33 years here as a teacher. I was very privileged uh, uh, to, to be on this beautiful campus and saw many boys pass through me. I'm still in touch with them. Uh, the most beautiful thing about the job I did was it kept me in touch with young people, you know, with their pure minds and hearts. And so the school I loved in Pune helped me to become a teacher and I finished my career at the school I loved again. So with that, thank you very much, Shubayu. I hope I was audible. Yes, sir, you're audible, loud and clear. And we not only heard you, but how much you miss both those schools. There, ladies and gent gentlemen, is a fine example of how somebody loves the school. Our next speaker is the founder and CEO of Notebook. We are happy to have Ms. Ochin Bhattacharya with us. Ochin, as I said, is the founder and CEO of Notebook. A chartered accountant by training, he was a director at Deloitte prior to starting Notebook. He has worked in India and abroad in various senior capacities in GE, PwC, KPMG, and Deloitte. Ochin is an avid reader and a passionate traveler with a keen interest in economics, history, literature, and philosophy. He's a regular speaker at various forums and chambers of commerce, and also contributes articles to numerous publications regularly. He's also on the board of some of the most renowned corporates and contributes significantly to their brand strategies. Ochin, over to you. Good evening, everyone. I again welcome all of you to today's session, which I believe is really important in optimizing a student's takeaway from his or her schooling. Anything in life can be looked at either as a duty, compulsion, tick the box requirement, which we do because of social, parental, or peer pressure, or we do it because of a simple four-letter word in the dictionary, 
which can make anyone do anything like it can make us move mountains make everything or anything possible and that is love that it is very important that our children love their schools it should be an absolute pleasure it should be the prime part of their childhood and teenage well spent today in this difficult times when school gates are closed for months and children are confined to their homes studying exclusively online away from the hustle and bustle of school corridors the watchful yet affectionate eyes of their teachers from their friends and playgrounds we at notebook thought it's important that in this platform we discuss and convey our love for schools which has been and will always be an integral part of human existence from times immemorial schooling to me is not only an academic pursuit but it's a way of life a metamorphosis which leads to character and overall persona building for life however before i discuss this topic let me extend a special welcome to our esteemed panelists who will enrich us with their thought perspective and experience today now there are three distinctly different categories of students right we we keep the parents aside for a bit let's concentrate on the students so there are three distinctly different categories of students first those who are so happy to get ready for school in the morning second those who desperately try to find an excuse in the morning for not going to school some of them are very creative in terms of finding new excuses third those who are indifferent they go because they have been asked to go won't it be wonderful if each and every child falls in the first category the question is how do we make it happen i'm sure parents of school going children will connect with me on this how do we ensure that each and every child is happy excited jubilant to go to school how do we ensure that for parents i guess there are two aspects to look at it right a child to me is like a ball of clay so the responsibility of mentoring the child rests on the able shoulder of parents and teachers <clears throat> let me first come to parents i guess it's important for parents to be a role model and ensure that children develop a positive attitude towards learning thus if parents themselves continue furthering their academic pursuits or do online training i'm sure children get a lot of inspiration at home thus i guess at a macro level what is most important is the importance of education and seeing is believing right so to act as role model and to make our children understand that yes indeed education is important at home it's important for parents to be very careful while discussing about the school in front of the student see each one of us we are entitled to our opinion there's nothing wrong about it but while discussing about the school or teachers i guess it's very important that parents are positive students need to feel good about the school and also respect the teachers and this culture of positivity and respect has to be initiated by parents so when we remember our school days each one of us had our own share of favorite teachers teachers whom we really like and teachers whom we were not that fond of but as far as respect goes the tremendous amount of respect for each and every one of them i guess that culture need to be passed on and at home while discussing about the school or any discontent that should never ever happen in front of the child next it's important for parents to take active interest about the activities at school every human being 
wants appreciation of their effort. And children also want their efforts to be recognized and discussed. Thus, whether it's annual sports day or first day of a new session or reopening of the school after summer break, your little one have a lot of stories to tell. And unless you lend them your ears for a patient hearing, they may end up being disappointed. At times, we do have conflicting priorities as well. An event like an annual sports day may clash with an important meeting at office. But one of the parents need to make time and ensure if we really want our children to love their school, we need to lead by example and make them understand that yes, indeed, the school is important. Next, it's important to get the children involved in every aspect of schooling. Nothing should be imposed on them arbitrarily. Now, this is from a parent's perspective. Thus, for instance, if there's a choice with regard to extracurriculars or a simple shopping for stationery, pockets, it's important that children, children are in sync with the whole process. So as to really put their best foot forward. Homework is a big, is a very important part of the school experience. Many of us grew up believing that the best place to do homework was alone in a quiet room at a tidy desk with sharpened pencils in hand. But lots of kids do better sprawled on the bedroom floor or sitting at the kitchen table. Let your child pick the spot. Just make sure there's a relatively clutter-free surface to write, good light, and no TV or blaring music. It's important to encourage homework before play and allow brief breaks during homework. As kids' mind will absorb more when they take brief interruptions from their studies. Next, I guess what is very important is coordination between parents and teachers. It's important for parents to continuously keep in touch with the school and to really take teachers' feedback seriously and work on it. Points that are raised by teachers during PTM and other interactions really help parents in identifying their developmental needs. Once these needs are catered to, the experience only becomes better and better for the student. Now, so far we were discussing about action point from the parent's perspective. Now, if we look at things from the school's perspective, schools also definitely have a responsibility to make each and every student fall in love with them. There's an age old proverb which says that if you want to be loved, first make yourself lovable. I really admire the schools and teachers in our country. And after seeing academic institutions all over the globe, I can say this with full confidence that our schools are second to none. And this is largely because of the kind of dedication that we see in our teachers. Thus, what is it that school can do to be even better than, better than this? It's important for schools and teachers to continuously reinvent themselves. At a macro level, education has been one of the least transformed sectors. By and large, education remains the same. Classroom, chalk and talk pedagogy. Definitely, changes have come. Welcome changes have come, I'll say. A lot of thought process has gone into it. But still, there's scope for doing a lot more if you look at other sectors. However, in today's age, I think learning and more importantly, unlearning is indispensable. The recent pandemic was an example where all of a sudden, out of nowhere, a huge challenge was thrown at our schools and teachers. And I must say, most of them have done a commendable job considering the practical constraints. We are indeed proud of our teachers. So first aspect that we discussed 
is with regard to continuously reinventing ourselves. Second aspect, which I feel is equally important, is to understand and recognize the fact that each student is a separate individual with an unique learning curve, individual likes and dislikes, strengths, developmental needs, that it is very important for schools to build in systems and processes to know them much better and work with them closely so as to develop customized learning paths for them. I know it's easier said than done in large classrooms, but individual attention, unquestionable acceptance and mentoring is what makes a student comfortable. The moment he or she believes in the fairness of purpose and the non-judgmental approach towards evaluation and suggested remedies, a student will be much more at ease with himself. It's important for students to speak up and not merely nod their head even when they don't understand or disagree. The first step, I believe, is making a student comfortable to open up and not conceal facts. And for that, I guess what is really important is unquestionable acceptance. To come to terms with the fact that each student is different with unique needs and to accept everyone as they are and work with them closely towards their betterment. Roads may differ, but destination has to be the same. Objective has to be the same. Betterment of each and every individual. Every student has some calling. Some look forward to sports. Others maybe are interested in drama or getting published in school magazine. Some may love the smell of chemicals in laboratory, whereas some may find peace in the library. While others may look forward to music or French lesson or the yearly excursion or student exchange programs. Thus, it's important to offer a wide bouquet of choices, as Baratza also mentioned, so that no one returns empty handed. After getting also, I think another aspect which is very important is that getting infrastructure in place is only job half done. The key to success will always be to get the most passionate lot of teachers for whom teaching will be much more than a day job. In corporate circles, there's a very common saying, people mostly don't change their jobs for money. They change their jobs because they don't like their managers. Likewise, schools are not measured by the size of their campus or their state of the art infra. At the end of the day, for a student, what matters is the encouraging smile on the lip of his teacher who can criticize him constructively, guide and mentor him objectively and make him feel connected to his school. I thank all of you for giving me a patient hearing and I look forward to the views of the stellar panel that we have today. Over to you, Shubayu. Thank you, Ochin. Thank you for that uh, wonderful exposition of the topic. I think that lays the groundwork for the part that everybody has been waiting for, our guest speakers. Today we are privileged to have three wonderful guest speakers with us. So without any further delay, let me introduce them to you. Our first guest speaker today is Dr. Arunima Chakraborty. Dr. Chakraborty is the principal of the Delhi Public School Bhagalpur, the founder principal of Delhi Public School Greater Rachi, and also the secretary of the VB College of Education the state coordinator for NTA 2019 for MHRD Department of Higher Education, Government of India, and the city coordinator for CTET 2019. She is also the advisory board member of the International Journal of 360 Degree Management Review. She keeps her faith in developing transformational, humanistic, and transactional leadership, leading to capacity building in society. After her bachelor's in education and in zoology, chemistry, and botany, where she stood first class first with distinction. She finished her master's in microbiology and has been the gold medalist in that course. She has a PhD in integrated pest management research part Indian Institute of Sciences, Bangalore. She has also completed the advanced leadership program from the Judge Business School, Cambridge University, UK. 
She was awarded the gold medal by Guwahati University for securing first class first position in MSc and BSc examinations. The Indian Academy of Sciences awarded her the fellowship and she worked on phylogenetic analysis. I'm sorry for my pronunciation, not very familiar with these terms and intraspecific variability of VAM using RAPD markers. She has been awarded the Outstanding Leader of the Year Award 2019 by the American College of Dubai, the Active Principal Award by Indira Gandhi Rashtriya Gyanpeet for Outstanding Performance of her Students, the Ideal Principal Award by Akhil Bhartiya Nagrik Vikas Kendra, Outstanding School Leader Award at Indian Education Awards 2017, Excellence in School Leadership Award 2016 at School Leadership Summit by Yelets Media, and she was also awarded the Nari Today Award 2017, Woman of Courage by Jagran and INEX Publishing House. Ma'am, it is indeed a privilege and a pleasure having you with us today. Over to you. Thank you so much. I think I'm audible. Uh, namaste and a warm good evening. Uh, by now, uh, the children would have returned to the classes after the summer break. But today, we are in a completely different scenario. Now, uh, the childhood and the school both are in suspension. We have online classes, but we don't have any mischief and games, nor assemblies and events. Worldwide, children are going through uh, this emotional and behavioral changes, including difficulty in concentration. Uh, there is a level of increase in their anxiety and in their education level. Most of them are confined in their houses, but now there is altogether a different scenario. Now, they, this all are regulated by their uh, going to their school because they in school they used to play. They have outdoor games and the playing regulates their emotion. And now children are not able to go out and play. So all now what I feel when I speak to my children is that they want to break free and go back to school. We must not worry about the learning gaps, but should think how children will cope with anxiety, uncertainty and change. How will they step tomorrow? They are now caught in a vacuum. The new education policy is in place, which was much needed to overhaul the Indian education system and looks to encourage high standards while keeping the schooling and university teaching rooted to the Indian values and culture. So now we see the learning environment seems to be entirely different. Schools are now scrambled to adopt to the online classroom environment. But the value interaction with the teachers they had in their schools and with their peers, the random accidental insight that came from learning together can never be replaced. So a blonded I mean, a model that makes use of online tools as well as in-person attendance looks likely in the near future. In the long term, the coursework and the credentials might become more modular to adopt to the first changing needs. Previously, to most parents, school meant following the prescribed curriculum and everything took a backseat, child's need and expectation. The very thought of going to school should bring a sparkle in the eyes of the children and to make lessons interesting it should be blended learning focused on students' engagement and active learning, and the teacher can deal with the differentiated learning. So that what children learn at school will help them to correlate with the ever choices and uh, they uh, want to make in this world. And it ensures a wide range of uh, choices. I feel very strongly that the course content is important. But what is equally important for how students explore the subjects? They can go discussion projects, workshops at school while they go through pre-recorded lectures and so. And in this type of pedagogical approach, a group space learning is transformed into a dynamic interactive learning. And I'm talking of an approach to a flipped classroom. The content would be uh, through the, uh, video, uh, I mean, the video lectures, digital research, and learning would be fun. The flipped classroom, I feel, is in need of the hour. And students would love to do so much in such classrooms because I feel it will provide a flexible environment, learning culture, international content, helping the children to develop their concept, understanding the concept and procedure, 
the fluency and uh, some of the learnings which happens in this flipped uh, classroom is that they engage from a lower to a higher cognitive level and that is very very important and at home children have knowledge and comprehension and while they come back to school there will be application of the knowledge which they have gone through at uh, home through uh, the various video lectures analysis synthesis and evaluation of what they have gone through now uh, the the more important uh, the cphc has also introduced that uh, we'll have skill education and uh, now we are moving towards ai that is artificial intelligence and machine learning uh, i am uh, speaking all this because i see the schools uh, I, i mean uh, after the pandemic seems to be somewhat like this the introduction of uh, ai in education has also made the learning very interesting though it has not taken a boom it gives the teachers the opportunity to see the weakness for example uh, there is a platform where i teach a, a lesson to my uh, children and uh, the uh, the in the platform uh, there are students who can uh, give answer to the questions which are put on to them so if uh, the number of incorrect answers to a particular question is uh, more that means that the concept is not clear and it demands attention the ai tools can also help make global classrooms available to all across language barriers creating a subtitles in the real time what the teacher is teaching children who are sick children who are uh, disabled cannot come to school because everyone learns come learns uh, at school and they want to come to school they can have this uh, courses through artificial intelligence sitting right uh, at home education might be uh, be a bit a bit uh, slow to adopt to this uh, ai and machine learning but the changes are just beginning and it will surely continue machine learning uh, is an application of actually an application of artificial intelligence meaning that it is a subset to ai and machine learning can be used to give a student individualized educational experience students can learn at their own pace and both ai and the ml that is uh, artificial intelligence and machine learning have the capability of transforming education bringing in more personalized learning because we need to prepare these children what they learn at school and that must be applicable when they go out uh, uh, to make out their career now the uh, some other there are some certain ways where already uh, the artificial intelligence and machine learning have been implemented in many schools i uh, i mean it will be very wonderful when a child goes to a classroom and the robot is there and the robot in the classroom controls the students health level i mean i think every child would uh, always love that every morning they rush to school and the robot is there wishing the child and taking the health status then we can have we have students you know wearing uniforms with trackers so then to keep them safe whenever uh, they are in school there are many incidents and as a move move back home in the school transport even headbands are there uh, with uh, the ai and ml which determines the concentration level a child is having and it also helps them to predict their career pathway application of uh, artificial uh, intelligence and machine learning is uh, also there in predictive analytics for example uh, uh, there is a software which has developed a early warning system and uh, through that software we could detect a student you know uh, who is at risk of not completing the classes or having less attention towards uh, academics and that is based on certain behavioral and other data analytics precise grading uh, would also help the teachers uh, because there is no uh, unified grading system and uh, at times uh, we as teachers also you know uh, we don't do proper judgment we are not properly judge we judge the students on the basis of uh, i mean what they have learned and uh, how to you know go about with it so with ml in place that is machine learning in place then we will very soon be able to build a integrated system of formative and interim assessment 
that will enable us to accurately measure students' ability across the school year without the need for time consuming and uh, that can be at the end of every uh, summative assessments. But uh, these are certain technology which I feel uh, feel uh, has, uh, has, has to come now in our educational uh, organizations, right from uh, lift learning to artificial intelligence and machine learning, though it is still there, but we have to make better use of this uh, technology in education. And that is what I see as a school reopens after the pandemic. But interestingly, the school starts with inspiring teachers. And uh, since the AI or ML here, the teacher uh, has also to be properly guided and monitored and mentored. So the teacher should also be open-minded. And uh, open-minded teachers, they make kids believe in themselves, they motivate them and uh, makes an effort. It starts with the teacher who are creative. Uh, the teachers are uh, should be more supportive and tech savvy. The teacher should not be teachers or educators, but I feel they should be I mean counselors. They should motivate and guide them as they go through as a child goes through emotional and educational crisis because there are times there are incidents which uh, the children are uh, the students they don't share with the parents but they're very comfortable to share to their teachers this school app every school has a school app now i think the school ha app should have a customized teacher where there is a one-to-one -one interaction of the child with the teacher and uh, the, uh, so what happens with that is the boasting of the uh, morale of the students uh, rises and uh, they feel their worth. It lives with the mind said that my teachers know me and I feel that I can easily communicate with them. The child waits for the next morning to be at this school. They feel that they can always go to the teachers and they love knowing that they have someone who is looking out for them every morning. Children love school and when they realize that they are not just numbers in their school, every child has an inherent capacity in which he or she is good at. And the school provides a platform to showcase their talents and they feel appreciated and acknowledged. Encouragement and support concentration on students as a whole, not only education, but a tightly needed community and makes the community more progressive. To make this school uh, interesting, uh, there should also be reward maximization approach. And uh, we should always encourage the good work of the students. And there should be no, no, no negative approach. And because it has a very bad effect on the mindset of the children, and it really aggravates their mindset. They feel very laid down and uh, uh, they lose their confidence. Now we see uh, uh, that webinars you know, are now becoming a part of every school schedule and it must be continued even beyond, I mean, when, we, when the children goes back to school because there are reasons to it. But I feel uh, as principal of schools, I feel that students' voice has been completely left out in the webinars. So we need uh, their choices, we need their voices, and we should also have webinars where their voices felt and heard. Children uh, through these webinars can also uh, interact much easier uh, and hear from incredible people they like to have, they like want to hear them as their role model. Even if uh, they can't travel, now we have webinars, the children can interact, and this would continue making the school more interesting. Internet offers so many different opportunities to get involved in things around the campus. For example, uh, like writing for the school website. And that should, uh, could be an opportunity um, offered to the students and children decides to accept the challenge by writing an article and they feel very proud because they feel connected to the school. The children, uh, whenever they feel connected, you know, you know, they feel that there is a tenderness in the environment and uh, uh, the children uh, are become more and more attached 
not only to their uh, i mean the uh, students peers to their teachers and the school environment as a whole now uh, we can also have visiting faculties uh, which has now become the order of the day here i'm going beyond the teachers there are people who are doing research for example uh, the, there are researchers who are working on machine learning so they can come through the webinars and they can teach the children because this are now going to be a part of the curriculum as in skill development so they can come it's not necessary that teacher only teach the children there may be researchers there may be people who are more apt in certain skill they can come up and also teach them making schooling teaching very interesting and uh, uh, the most uh, important thing which i feel uh, is uh, that uh, the blended uh, model of the school uh, to take place with technology in place you have uh, e learning videos making them uh, move to from a normal classic classroom to a flipped learning classrooms introduction of the uh, the ais and mls how we can do it a few things which are already done in some of the school across the globe and uh, but there are more to do with it and uh, surely in in a year or so we will find that every uh, every school has a robot and every school has this technology in place so the crisis of the day here now today all confined to their homes not able to see their children are not able to see their uh, schools their classroom uh, they can only see the teacher but they can't feel their presence uh, this is now a, a test of ingenuity and our capacity to shake the rigid ways of thinking the future is still ours to make the situation that has been thrust on us let us relate a school where uh, let us uh, i mean create an environment where children can breathe freely relax experience trust tenderness and the most important thing is discovering themselves let the school be a caring place and nowhere else uh, where that uh, i mean it's a home a second home to a child where the child every morning would love going to school i think a blended school with technology in place with proper learning ethics i mean uh, all the human qualities together makes a school very interesting thank you very much thank you for the hearing thank you so much ma'am was fantastic hearing the your views about how technology can be integrated into our school system yeah uh, would just take this opportunity to tell you two small things about notebook one of the things that certain schools are doing with notebook is they have actually started flipping their classrooms around because most houses have one device where the parents and students both want access at the same time what the teachers are now doing is they are sending links to notebook videos two days in advance yeah and they are saying watch this video write your own summary in 250 to 300 words yeah and then the classroom is a discussion of your summary yeah which means that the class time in class is much better utilized in discourses and debates rather yeah. than just you know getting transfer yes. of content yes. from the book to the two students yeah that is what i was uh, uh, stressing on more and that is uh, i mean that is about the flipped uh, classroom culture you know where the children uh, uh, they have uh, they learn uh, their own personalized learning at school through these e videos and uh, the digital videos and then when they come to school they implement what they have learned you know It, it is not the other way around that the children are uh, taught in the uh, class they are given homework they go back and do no this is just the opposite children do the homework and come back to school and uh, you know when they come back to school they have more space uh, uh, i mean uh, space for uh, uh, i mean uh, whatever they have learned application of all this so i think flipped learning is is what is uh, the priority and what the school has to go through is flipped learning classes i think uh, the classic classroom classes is now not going to happen after uh, the covid pandemic that is my view i mean there may be differences and uh, everywhere if we use even ai uh, uh, that has a rightly say uh, i mean uh, that we i teach a child a concept and through the ai and uh, ml uses of this technology we can easily understand which part the child is not understanding as a whole as a classroom as a whole and uh, we and that demands more of attention 
I think. And you know, it is very interesting when children go back to school and see their robots standing at the door, uh, acknowledging them, taking their health, uh, you know, I mean, their health reports and making them go through the classroom. Uh, I think every no child will ever think of bunking or you know not going to school. I think blended Absolutely, learning, ma'am. blended learning is what is required. It's the blended learning. Absolutely, ma'am. Thank you so much for that. Well, ladies and gentlemen, after that bit of a glimpse into the future from Dr. Chakraborty, it's time now that we go across the Persian Gulf and welcome our next speaker. Our next speaker is Mrs. Molly Momin. She hails from the state of Maharashtra and did her entire schooling at St. Joseph's Convent High School, Bandra West, Mumbai. She graduated with a BA and a B.Ed. from Mumbai University and completed her post-graduation in literature from Madurai Kamraj University and also obtained an M.Ed. degree from the Open Education System. She, she served in three schools in Mumbai for approximately 15 years. The last five years of her career in Mumbai was as the headmistress at St. Lawrence High School at Vashi, Navi, Mumbai. Out of her 45 years in the field of education, for the last 28, she has been with the Asian School in Bahrain. And true to the title of this webinar, she loves her school. She loves children and their educational development is of great interest to her. It's indeed our privilege and pride to have Mrs. Molly Momin with us. Thank you so much, ma'am, for joining us. Over to you. Thank you. And thank you so much for introducing me. Uh, yes, indeed, I've spent uh, all, my, all my primary years at St. Joseph's School, Bandra Bombay. And uh, it was a wonderful time. I treasure the memories of that school uh, even now. And I, uh, I, it's gone deep down in memory all the time that I spent there. Then again, 28 years of my life, I have spent with the Asian school. It's so dear to my heart. Uh, indeed, it was a pleasure listening to Dr. Arunima and uh, all of you. Uh, it's an interesting topic. School, school indeed is a very interesting topic uh, because I love children and I love uh, to see their development. I like to care for every aspect of their life and to watch them growing, it's, uh, a great, it's of great interest to me. Well, let me uh, come to the topic. It's, uh, okay, it's mainly about this pandemic period and how it has brought about a great massive change and uh, how the world is coping up with this uh, massive change. Well, uh, Heraclitus, a Greek philosopher, has been quoted as saying, change is the only constant in life. Change and constant, two contradictory terms. From blackboard to whiteboard, and from whiteboard to digital board. I'm sure you will all agree with me. It is a massive change. Periodically, changes have been coming. It has been affecting a lot of spheres of life. We have had school closures on several occasions due to natural disaster, disorders or disasters, but not on this scale as the pandemic. February 25th brought about a massive change in every sphere of life, a major one being that of schools. Everyone stayed home the teachers and the taught. School was like a desert, hardly any existence there, except for the administration going on. Educationalists were at a loss not to restore. Of course, the uh, education system had to be, had to have an overhaul of the entire education system. Not to restore the status quo, as the status quo wasn't uh, working. An effort, a mighty effort had to be made to bring about changes. The IT department came to our rescue. Technology is so important today. The 21st century, we cannot do without the IT department, the technology that is required and the internet. A mighty task it was to arrange 
for a different education system. Virtual classes sprung up and a lot had, be, had to be done in that sphere. Virtual classes had to be arranged from KG right up till grade 12. Otherwise, education could not go on. Education and child development is a very important part of life. Children have to be attended, they cannot be neglected. Every aspect of their life, the emotional sphere, uh, sphere their physical aspect, mental aspect, everything should be cared for in education. A lot of planning had to be done, great planning, replanning, scheduling and rescheduling, rules and regulations to fit the virtual classes so that there is smooth working of, this, of the school. Teacher IDs had to be set up. Student IDs had to be set up. Mailing and informing the parents. And we did it all. All schools in Bahrain did it. We set up virtual classes. Initially, problems did crop up. But of course, we were quick to tackle it. Intruders in the Zoom platform. Hackers caused a lot of disturbance. The best was to have a, an, the official Zoom. So we went for it. After the official Zoom was set up, every mischief monger could be tracked. Every, every stakeholder was involved in the plan, in the working of the Zoom, in the working of education parents, management, teachers, students, everybody was involved. Teachers tried to reach out to all the students as best as can be, as could be. They did their best to put at ease every child. Children had a different kind of education. It was homeschooling. Parents also were disturbed, but they did their best to cooperate. A monitor teacher was engaged to monitor the whole system, the whole class. Every class had a monitor teacher. And she supervised the working of the virtual class. Every class had the monitor teacher. She reported the problems involved. She monitored the attendance of students. Nobody could play truant. They were questioned. Parents got the report. Every issue was discussed at staff meetings, which were more regular than before, or leadership meetings, and the issues, the issues were addressed and solved. Well, the children spent a lot of time behind the screen. Screen time was taxing them. The teacher had the great task of uh, enlightening them, making their classes very interesting, Boredom should not set in. Distraction should not set in. The teacher tried all kinds of methods to enrich the class, make it interesting. Various methods were resorted to. I must say the blended classroom was the normal. And uh, of course, by blended classroom, I suppose everybody knows about it now. It is a mix or a blend of the traditional as well as the modern virtual classes. Here, uh, I'm, I'm reminded of the great Chinese philosopher. His quote thus, uh, Confucius, his quote goes thus, I hear and I forget. I see and I remember. I do and I understand. It has a message. It tells us that no passive class will work. No lecture method will work. So a lot of activity has to come in so that the, cl the class is effective. Well, we had a uh, blended classroom with a lot of activities like interaction, of course, should be there. Interaction keeps the, the, the class alive. Quizzing, gamification, especially at the lower levels for KG students. Flip classes did come in. 
Dr. Arun, Arunima gave a good view of it. We also had project-based uh, class, uh, classes, activity-based classes. And children were very active, children, teachers saw to it. They were supervised. Very often I visited classes. It was more the interest in seeing those lovely classes, the, the, the participation and the enjoyment that I visited, though they took it as supervision and of course they were more alert. The senior supervisors, the senior teachers also, those were supervisors and academic supervisors, coordinators, did visit, observed it, and of course saw to the smooth working of the uh, virtual classes. Apart from this, we also wish to follow the academic calendar very closely. We do not want uh, to deviate from the calendar, the, the, the plans that we had set up. So we tried to follow every program that was arranged and we started with the virtual assembly on the 11th of May, which so we celebrated the 37th annual anniversary day on the 11th of May. The first ever virtual assembly was, uh, was, was, was arranged. I can show you some slides. Just give me a minute, please. Yeah, this is the school, a beautiful school, which I love very much and hold close to my heart. 28 years here this, into this uh, campus we shifted in 2015. Before that, we were in another campus. Here we have from KG to 12. This is the first year of uh, 12th grade. This year, we will, our children of the 12th grade will be uh, appearing for the board examination. And you know, it's a very crucial year. Uh, the pandemic had to strike this year itself. Anyway, we are preparing them as best as possible in touch with them. We have more than 200 children appearing. Well, we had uh, the first virtual uh, assembly here. Here it is. This was the first uh, virtual assembly. Children of grade 12 arranged it. Uh, I addressed them. Then we had poems recited. Uh, a thought was elaborated and spoken. And uh, <laughs> speeches were given by many. There were dances, music, etc all arranged by the children. They showcase their talents on this occasion. And uh, thus, uh, you know, they are able to bring out the inherent uh, talents in them. This is an opportunity for them to showcase their talents. Uh, apart, they, you know, children are very resourceful. We only have to give them the opportunity. Well, uh, uh, after this, uh, after, the, after the first virtual, uh, assembly. We did continue with the assembly and grades 8 to 12 uh, had their turn during the week from Sunday to Wednesday, a grade each day. So all, of, all the children of the higher classes staged their uh, talents, showcased it. We also had the book week during the month of May. Yes, here it is. Uh, May 7th to 14th, we had the book week. It is, you know, nowadays we don't hear of the children reading books. So this is an opportunity to, uh, you know, to bring out this quality in them, reading habit, to create a love for books. Uh, children brought uh, vocabulary every day, three words, three or four words, which were put up in their classes and they spoke about it. They brought the antonyms, uh, the uh, uh, synonyms, the uh, definition, the, 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 the explanation, the meaning of it. They made sentences with it. And uh, PowerPoints were, uh, PowerPoint presentations were given by various children. Here we have Jitu Thomas, an author of 
uh, Amazon best book, uh, bestseller book. He, he's an ex-student of our school. His book was Mumblings from the Death, a former student the, of the Asian school, and he completed his grade 10 in 2010. So uh, he was also, uh, he was also uh, spoken about and uh, published, his book was published. Well, uh, um, children, children also created uh, PowerPoint presentations and presented them in the classes. This is it. You can see the various words with meanings, the phonetics also emphasized on, sentences uh, are given, antonyms, etc. This is a, power, a PowerPoint presentation by one of our students. Here it is, another one. Ernest Hemingway, one of the books that was mentioned, a little about him was uh, given. Children actively participated in it. In the, this was in the month of May. Then in the month of June, we had the Environmental Day. You can see everybody in green from the KG right up till the principal, all in green to show the importance of the day. There was greenery everywhere. Beautiful wordings, save trees, save water, save earth. It is by an HKG, high, high KG student. You can see the children in green, as much as possible in green. More children, the little ones took more interest. Yeah, reduce, re reuse and recycle. These were the slogans. We had a virtual parent teacher meeting on the 13th of June and the parents were quite happy about it. They gave us a good feedback about the whole issue of virtual classes. They were happy with it. More of them, parents and teachers. Yes. Then we had the sixth International Yoga Day on the 21st of June. Every year we have it. This year too, we had, this year we had the sixth International Yoga Day. This has been uh, initiated by our Prime Minister. Uh, and we've been having it since the time he, he was in the he was in he was in the ruling party. Uh, we had we had it was truly international with uh, instructors from different parts of the world. We had from UAE, we had from UK instructors. Uh, each instructor uh, led a grade. Different grades had different teachers. We also had the laughing yoga, laughter yoga. Sorry. Uh, with you can hear, see here, Mr. Joe Hoare, Mr. Ms. Kitty from Hong Kong, Mr. K. Thomas, K. M. Thomas from Bahrain. Uh, so they uh, they conducted the yoga, the yoga class in the first period. It was very entertaining and truly uh, international. Everybody enjoyed it. It received wide coverage. Then again, we had uh, Father's Day celebration. This is the yoga, of course. That's it, yoga. Then we had the inquisitive quiz titled as Social Science Quiz on the 28th of June. 30th week closed for the holidays. We had Father's Day celebrated, Mother's Day celebrated. Then the last, recently we had the ASB MUN, Model United Nations uh, by Diplomathon Global. They conducted the orientation course from Mumbai. This is, we, we are having the holidays now, but children were willing to participate. We had a big crowd and uh, very soon we will be having the proper program on the 18th and 19th of August. Children have to register. Later, we will have the program ASB Mun. Okay, so those were the programs that we had during the holidays and uh, during the holidays also. Teachers have been trained during the holidays. They've been attending the um, CBSC training sessions also. We've been having various webinars. And indeed, you can see education is given a lot of importance by the Asian school. And we have passionate teachers who are interested in the development and education of the children. And from whatever, from their side, whatever they could do, they have done and will do in the future to come. 
Okay, it is the 21st century, and you find uh, you find that a lot of skills should be inculcated in the children. We cannot do without without technology and the internet. It is very important. For the future, we need to redesign our system of child development and education, of course, uh, post COVID days. <coughs> the skills you can see, they are technological uh, uh, literacy, problem solving, critical thinking, communication and teamwork. All these play a great role. We have to get our children to develop these skills. In fact, the main aim of education is the development of skills, values, etc. It is not so much as context-based, but we have a periphery of other values, other aspects attached to these the, the, to the uh, to the context-based education. I think I have shared what I put today. I hope you all enjoyed it. And thank you for giving me this opportunity. And thank you to the listeners. God bless you. Thank you so much, ma'am. I keep doing this every week where we host these webinars and I am typically tasked with the job of moderating them. I start getting extremely jealous of the students who are studying now because I wish our school days had all of these. Incidentally, ma'am, we are also doing one of these online events. I don't know if Abhishek would have told you about it. We are hosting something called the Zero Hour Online International Debates. We have 64 schools from across India, Nepal, Middle East, and Africa who are now participating for a series of debates between schools. The grand finale is on the 15th of August. This is only the first edition. We had hoped we would reach 64 schools. We ended up having 300 schools applying. So we are sure that successive seasons would definitely come up. And I'm sure that the Asian School Bahrain would definitely, definitely be a part of it. Thank you. Thank you so much, ma'am, for being with us today. Well, with that, ladies and gentlemen, we will now introduce to you your next speaker of the day. Our next speaker is Mrs. Kavita Agarwal. Mrs. Agarwal is the principal of the Mount Litera Z School in Roorkee. She has worked as a PGT History, PGT Sociology, PGT Environmental Science, Housemistress and IPSC Coordinator at Sindhya Kanya Vidyalaya, PGT and Housemistress at St. George's College, Masuri, Vice Principal at DPS Panipat City, Vice Principal at Diwan Public School, Meerut, and is currently working with the Mount Litera Z School since 2017 as the principal. Her vast teaching and administrative experience spans more than 25 years. She holds a BSc Medical, MA History, MA Sociology, PGDWE, Ecology and Environment, an MBA Silver Medalist, a B.Ed. with five years of research experience in the field of human wildlife conflicts and its mitigation. She has been associated in various capacities with institutions like St. George's College, Missouri, Sindhya Kanya Vidyale, Colonel Brown, Cambridge School, DPS Panipat City, Marshall School, Dehradun, Diwan Public School, Meerut, etc. With a work experience of 25 years plus in the field of education, she is an eminent personality with a clear vision for the school to ensure that all students achieve both academically and socially and are able to sustain the life of their choice. She's a leader who inspires her people to do things that they never thought they could. Ma'am, it's a privilege having you with us. If you could please have you say a few words. Mama, I think you're on. Hello, board. Yes, yes. Hello, yes, everyone. Can hear you now. Very good thank evening. You. And first of all, I would like to thank the team of Notebook to invite me as speaker for this very simple sounding but very deeply meaningful topic. Because why I'm saying this? Because initially, when I was asked to speak on this topic, I simply thought, what would I say on this? It's so simple. Why students would love their school? Simply because if they get their needs fulfilled in school and they would love it. But then when I started exploring the topic, I realized that there is a very deep meaning to this simple one line theme, I love my school, that we, we need to explore what the students want and are the schools providing that? Why children will love if they get their needs fulfilled? But we need, we have to explore those needs. And I would like to share my screen now 
through a ppt i will explore the topic and hope we all would learn love it just give me a minute so when i started thinking about this that love for school how we will explore this topic it came to my mind that basically it's a tripartite love three parties basically are involved in love for school and all these loves are interconnected one love is based on others love for school so students love for the school why students would love school in that the most important part is that they would love a school if they find teachers good and loving but why the teachers would be good and loving if they are in love with their institution for which they are working and the third basic love includes love from the head of the institution so all these two loves will be successful if the head of the institution is in deeply love with the institution then i explored it further that if we simply say children's needs are met and they fall in love with school but there are different age levels we can say if a school has a very good infrastructure good labs good it department and any etc xyz anything but at pre primary level why would a student love the school not for science labs they have no use of those science labs for them so at pre primary level the reason for loving school is different at primary level it's different at middle and senior level the needs of the students are different and how far the school is able to meet those needs that would make the students fall in love with the school and it does not end with the school education children remain in love with the school even after graduating from the school and that is actually very very important aspect of students love for the institution at pre primary level what could be the attraction for the students attractive classrooms play way method of teaching where students don't feel the burden of learning they learn while playing toys games loving and caring teachers play stations activities all this so definitely at pre primary level very simple needs are there and children fall in love for all these things at primary level when children are growing up their academic burden increases they need to learn in number of new concepts new new words new things so they start realizing little bit about their likings dislikings their interests and the teachers also have to be very very means watchful vigilant and they have to observe the children very deeply and very minutely to see unique potential of each and every child so at this level children would love school if they have simple interesting reading story books in library they have playing facilities playgrounds games meant for their age group co curricular activities which can engage them to channelize their extra energy we all know that children are extra energetic and the most important thing for them is that their energies are channelized so that their personalities are shaped properly because at this time children don't know but the school has to do this job and children realize this afterwards that what the school has done for them it labs this is just we all know that children love gadgets these days they are born tech savvy in a simple way if i say 
we find them technically very advanced from the very childhood because or in every house we have gadgets and especially during this time of COVID-19, children are exposed so much to these devices. Then peer group learning. This is where children, they feel like learning more and more because when they observe the children of their age group, they start developing a competitive spirit and which makes them learn better. So if the school provides a healthy competitive spirit through organizing these activities, games, etc. So primary level has this need to be fulfilled. Then middle and senior level. At this time, children start understanding themselves. The feeling of self-recognition starts coming in their mind and they start realizing their likes, dislikes, their interests very strongly. And for this, they need specific things to satisfy themselves, to keep themselves engaged. And that includes music, dance, art and craft. And at this time also children, they are going through a lot of physical changes also. So they need teachers and school to help navigate the, through academic disruption due to hormonal changes. There should be no bullying, no ragging, a good learning environment, friendly, loving environment in the school, and guidance to deal with academic and personal pressures, life skills trainings, career counseling, recognition of hidden talents and potential by the school. So at this stage, children have these needs. Now, the school level we have discussed, but there are there is one more level left, alumni's love. Why the children would love their institution when they have left, when they have graduated, they are now busy with their life, they have set goals, targets, but we find children still connected with their alma maters, their school. So what makes them connected with the institution at this stage? Students will remain connected with the school even after completing their school education when they find themselves successful in life and well settled in life. They feel that foundation for their success was laid down in the school. The school has molded their personality and clarified their vision for their future. The school helped them to overcome the flaws for being a good human being. Apart from this, that at different age, children have different needs and different reasons to love their institution. There are some common reasons which are applicable to all the age groups. Neat and clean campus, resources and infrastructure, loving and caring teachers, lot of activities which makes learning fun. Now, this sounds very simple, but if we go deeper into this, I just recalled what I learned while I was doing my MBA. We read there Maslow's hierarchy of needs. And all of a sudden it came to my mind that this hierarchy of needs is so well connected with different age levels and needs of the students. So what is this hierarchy of needs? The first level is physiological need. Now it says breathing, food, sex, sleep, homeostasis, excretion. As it is the whole pyramid, if we see, we might not be able to connect, but when we go deeper into this, we realize that actually it is very well connected with the student's needs. Breathing. If suppose the school rooms are not airy and dampness is there, the proper lighting is not there, what will happen? While teachers are teaching, students will not be able to concentrate. They would never fall in love with their studies, with curriculum, with books, with workbooks. So the simple thing, when they have fresh air to breathe, properly ventilated rooms, then food. We simply talk about the schools. Definitely, we all are coming from the schools, which are the topmost ranking schools. So there we have all facilities. but. Food, 
mid day meal as given by government and in many schools in many schools for pre primary mid day meals are provided so food then excretion now it doesn't mean that they need only toilets but yes i have heard so many times some parents talking when i travel that they are talking about the hygiene in school neat and clean toilets so definitely children sometimes they have fuss in coming to school if they don't get these basic needs fulfilled so the first level is physiological needs and if the schools meet these needs definitely children fall in love with their school the second level is safety and security security of the body girls boys do they feel safe especially girls do they feel safe is the school campus free of any kind of sexual harassment or abuse is there any proper sexual harassment committee to look after any such cases and then resources morality family health and property so all these things if we see uh, just superficially we don't find it connected to children's needs but definitely Uh, education which does not make a child capable of some kind of employment or job or work it's useless so that safety of a career safety of employment also is big attraction for students because that foundation is laid in the school do they have proper choice of subjects do they have the subjects for which they which they want to settle their career so then resources do the schools have good labs it labs science labs physics chemistry biology language labs mathematic labs so these resources help the students to shape their personality and their career also so students love the school definitely a school which will need uh, meet all the needs of the students would definitely be loved by everyone then third need need of love and belonging it's really really very important if we do not have a sense of belongingness bonding love connection so we will never feel happy and comfortable students teachers they all spend more than half of the day in the school and if we talk about the boarding schools 24/7 they are in the school campus if there is no love there is no feeling of belongingness there is no sense of connection there are no friends then definitely children would never like the school they would never fall in love with the school so i think these all needs need to be taken care of if we want our children our teachers to fall in love with the school then next higher level is self esteem definitely self esteem can be at any age but normally we feel that children don't realize the need to understand self esteem or they don't understand self esteem till a particular age because they are free from any such kind of feelings but yes by the time they come to middle school senior school they realize their own self they start thinking of themselves as an individual also and self esteem becomes very very important for them they want to be respected they want to be recognized and at the same time we need to make them learn the importance of respect for others also so if this school is doing this job definitely the children would fall in love with the school and not only for students i will say this hierarchy of needs is applicable on teachers as well then self actualization or self realization very very important which works even after the students graduate from the school they are successful somewhere in life we will commonly find students saying this ex students or the old boys and girls of the school when we meet them somewhere if they are not successful they will find faults with their parenting they will find faults with the school they studied in so self actualization is the stage where children are confident what they want in life they know what career they want to settle themselves in and if this school helps them in that through proper career counseling 
through proper guidance, through proper resources like libraries, labs, and all other facilities needed for that. And good teachers, faculty who can solve all their problems. So that will lead to students falling in love when they are in school at senior level and even after they graduate from the school. So I think this hierarchy of needs made it very clear that at different levels, children have different needs and the schools, they have to meet those needs. Then only they can expect their children to fall in love with the institution. Now, another way of categorizing the needs of the students are academic needs, cultural needs. Academic needs can be fulfilled with good curriculum, good faculty, good infrastructure, good library, all means through which their academics can be made strong and effective. Cultural needs can be fulfilled by organizing cultural activities, drama, dance, music, singing, art, craft, everything. Then physical and athletic needs, that students need to be physically fit. And many of them want to have sports as their career. So physical and athletic needs. Then emotional needs. We all know that these days, children means they are normally not experiencing joint families. There are emotional needs as well. And not only we talk about joint family and nuclear family, many of the parents, they have just single child. Children do not have any siblings at home. They don't have anyone of their age group to connect with. So emotional needs are very important to be. Emotional needs are very, very important to be fulfilled if we want children to fall in love. Then next is teachers love for the school. So one party love for the school is over. I switch over to the second party. Why teachers should fall in love with the school or how we can expect teachers to fall in love with the school. Most important, financial security. Although it's not the only thing which is important, but yes, very important. Job security. When these two securities are given, the rest of the things can be managed very easily. Teachers, if they have professional growth, if a school gives them proper professional trainings at regular intervals and keeps them introduced and abreast with evolving trends in the field of education. This gives them a lot of self-confidence. Then appreciations and recognition of good work. It's very, very important. We all are human beings. We all need appreciation and encouragement, which keeps on boosting our morale and we keep on working good and giving our best. Then very important, which normally is not discussed scope of committing some mistakes without fear of losing job. That is very, very important. If every time teacher, we expect them to be innovative, we expect them to do something new at the same time, we don't give any scope of give, committing mistakes. So I feel this is very important. If we want teachers to work freely and come out with some new innovative ideas and to think out of the box, they need this scope also. Then encouragement and freedom for being innovative. So teachers, I have already discussed this point that if we are giving freedom for you know, being innovative, definitely it is related to the scope of committing some mistakes. Then exposure to new technology which is really very, very important nowadays. We can't do without technology because in this time of pandemic, technology is the only thing through which we are still able to carry on with the school system. Stress-free and good working environment. Then 
job rotations to break the monotony. When I say job rotations, it doesn't mean that a physics teacher will be given a class of chemistry to teach. No. Apart from academics, teachers play many different roles in conducting various activities in the school. So teachers should be given the experience of handling different age groups of the children, different activities. And this kind of exposure actually enhances the professional growth of the teacher. So if all these incentives are provided to teachers, they would definitely fall in love with the school. And last, three party, basic three tripartite love for school. So the last element, principals or head of the institution's love for school. Why a principal should fall in love for, with the school? Simply because principals have to prove their worth every time for the institution. But no, that's not the only thing. Supportive management. Freedom to implement plans and policies. I mean to say that the puppet principal will never be able to do anything innovative or anything out of box. So freedom to implement plans and policies, good team of teachers and administrative staff to make plans successful, financial and job security. When I say this, it means that even the principals should have the scope of making some mistakes, not every time, but some mistakes. So luckily I'm having full support of my management. So I thank God for providing me this institution where I'm working at present. So basic tripartite love for school I have discussed. Now comes the most important part. All these three bonds of love will fail if the parents of the institution, schools, students are not in love with the school. Why they would send the child to any particular school. Definitely when they feel that there is something that the school will provide for better growth and personality development of their child. So the tripartite love is incomplete without including parents. As we know that school these days play multiple roles in a child's life. Parents need a lot of support from the school to deal with different issues related to their child's behavior, like aggressiveness, introvert, extrovert. They expect proper counseling and guidance for their words. And sometimes teachers and principal have to counsel the parents also for good parenting. There are so many young parents. And I often, when we conduct all these parent orientations, parent-teacher meetings, then sometimes parents, when they come with their problems, I simply feel that they really are having problem in handling their child. Very young parents with small kids that fail to understand child's psychology and they keep on complaining about the normal behavior of a child also. So school has to play a role in counseling parents as well. Especially during this time of COVID, if you see how I just support this point that Parents expect a lot from the school. Nowadays, parents have to handle the child for the whole day. Earlier, at least half of the day, the child was spending in school. But now, for the whole day, child is with the parent. And children, definitely, they are very demanding. So parents, they are also coming up with their problems. They are contacting teachers, principals. And what are their issues? Ma'am, we both are working child cannot do work in the morning when you are sending at 9 a.m. Will you please do it at 8 a.m.? So we school has to cater to the needs of the parents because sometimes these needs are very genuine and we need to listen to the parents. And if we do that, then only we can expect the parents to fall in love with the institution, which will actually help in the growth of the institution as well. And parents, they started calling class teachers Ma'am, will you please have interaction with the child? Bacche ne keh diya hai, ab main nahi padhunga, main to teacher se hi padhunga, main aap se nahi padhunga. And the, this feedback from the parents, you know, it encouraged us to organize a number of online activities. We just started following the academic calendar fully and we were online for all activities. And very recently, we very successfully competed online declamation contest. We did 
वन महोत्सव थ्रू वर्चुअल काउंसलिंग एंड वर्चुअल इंटरेक्शन ट्री प्लांटेशन वी डेड activity best out of waste activity we did slogan slogan writing and for pre primary and primary students teachers interacted with them virtually through an activity organized especially for them flameless cooking and there was lot of positive feedback from the parents for this so we need to cater to the needs and expectations of parents as well if we want the students and the teachers to fall in love with the institution now school and students during covid 19 very important very important these things we have discussed so many things related to a bond between the school and the students but how far we are able to meet those needs for bond of love during this time of covid of course every school is trying its best all teachers are trying their best and i can see a remarkable change in my own team of teachers how well they are doing it how much tech savvy they have become now it's really wonderful to see them but yes of course we can't say it's a very very comfortable situation but yes schools are doing and finally we are able to make a very abnormal and very challenging situation also we have converted into a new normal the term being used is new normal situation so initially it was very unexpected and unusual situation for all the parties that is the principal the students teachers parents and management but schools have successfully converted this abnormal situation into a new normal by extending an extra helping hand and support to the teachers students as well as the parents in this digital era the schools managed to continue teaching the students by making very efficient and effective use of technology this has proved to be a blessing in disguise for all parties everyone has become increasingly digital and tech savvy and has actually made our honorable prime minister's dream of digital india come true let's see the positive side of the adverse situation also not only curricular curricular but extra curricular activities have also been conducted online definitely this positive role of school during this pandemic has made the bond of love between the school and teachers on one hand and students and parents on the other so with this i come to an end to this ppt but in the end i would like to share another ppt and this ppt has nothing to explain simply when i was exploring this topic i thought that we have never done it formally that we never tried to know why children love school why they are missing school so i conducted a survey i did a survey and it was done in the past two days only i asked some of my known teachers some of the teachers of my school and students and tried to collect their views on why they love school why they are missing school so i came to know so many things these are the original views of my students and whatever content is written here there might be some grammatical mistakes these are the views of children from grade 3 to grade 8 and they have simply expressed their views in their own words it provides me an environment where i can learn lots of basic skills and discipline my school teaches me ethics of life so that i can accept all challenges of life it offers a lot of cultural and academic activities which makes learning fun so i will not read the whole content but when i went through these comments i realized that how important teachers role is in making the students love the institution this was by ananya call the teachers are very kind to every student my student school offers so many different ways of learning it also offers so many different opportunities to get involved in many things around the campus avishit tyagi i'll be little fast because uh, time is less it is the best place to learn or temple of learning 
I like the behavior of our teachers as they were very kind and polite. Also, I like my school playground, swimming pool, library, etc. My school conducts activities every month. Kartavya Chauhan. So infrastructure, as I said in my previous explanations, infrastructure, playground, meeting the different needs of different children. I like the way teachers teach us. Again, teachers. I like that our school celebrates all festivals. So the cultural needs and conduct other activities as well and encourage children to participate. My school is, this is by Vasu Kohli. My school is my second home where I live. Great. These children, they have to have a feeling of home, a second home, home away from home. So this is what we have to make the children feel where I live with my teacher and friends and enjoy lots of valuable time by learning and doing activities, a purva rabat. I like my school for all the extracurricular activities. So not only academics, the schools have to pay a lot of attention to extracurricular activities. I learn something, every day I learn something new. I like my school because of the friendly environment, Yoshita Agarwal. My school is very big. Oh, it means spacious, airy, light, proper light, Good. It has all the facilities like swimming pool, dancing, singing, skating, football, basketball, etc. So children are multifaceted personalities these days as they are exposed to so many devices and definitely they can say the terms, they can pronounce those words which we didn't even know when we were of their age. Avishka Singh. Okay, the next is... My school is having brilliant teachers. Again, it comes to teachers. The most important component is teachers. My school is having different types of labs, infrastructure. For making a school day interesting, my school provides me activities on a regular basis. Agni Tyagi. We get quality education. Special emphasis is given on understanding overall development with qualified and talented teachers in a healthy environment. Healthy environment very important. My school nurtures individuals with outstanding values and explores their multiple talent. It stands multiple, it explores their multiple talent. Children, they feel that their talents have been taken care of. It stands on a principle that every child is unique. Yes, indeed, this is our motto and philosophy that every child is unique and nurtures the unique potential of child, which I like most about my school, Nishita. Then, by Vanshika Giri, it has some really good teachers who make the lessons interesting. So, effective teaching. My school is indeed a beautiful and interesting place. Aesthetic pleasure for the students. If the campus is beautiful, definitely it satisfies their aesthetic needs. Where we play many games, my school focused on how to make a student multi-talented. Very good. My school is one of the most popular school in the town. Oh, the children go by popularity also. We were never so active children. In my childhood, I was never like this. My school building is very beautiful. Again, aesthetic pleasure. And has a big playground. I have many friends at my school. So learning with peers, connectiv connectivity. Where we study and play together. Bonds of love and friendship. My teachers are very kind and caring towards everyone and I love to go to school because I learn new things every day. Great. Pratyaksh Goyal. I'm not going to read all comments, but these are all really the true feelings of the students. It is like a second home to me. Why Kavya? Above all, it gives me a platform to do better in life and also builds my personality. My school has practical labs for mathematics and science, which makes learning so much interesting. Good. The surrounding of my school is eye-catching. Wow, beautiful and clean. So again, it shows that cleanliness and beauty of the campus means a lot for the children. The computer lab, mathematics lab, science lab are very, very, are very well equipped. We can enjoy the facilities of games such as cricket, basketball, football, etc. Anshuman, the most important thing I like about my school is the cooperation of teachers and faculty. Again, teachers, Ridhima Goyal. 
श्रीदेव सरकार वेरी वेरी टैलेंटेड चाइल्ड ऑफ द स्कूल ब्रिलियंट स्टूडेंट ऑफ द स्कूल माई टीचर्स एक्सप्लेन एवरी चैप्टर ऑफ एवरी सब्जेक्ट टू मी पेशेंटली एंड दे ऑल्सो क्लियर माई डाउट्स माई स्कूल ऑल्सो हैज मेनी फैसिलिटीज लाइक स्विमिंग पूल प्रैक्टिकल लैब्स एंड अ लार्ज असेंबली ग्राउंड द स्कूल गिवस अस मेनी अपॉर्चुनिटीज फॉर ओवरऑल डिवेलपमेंट एंड दे ऑल्सो देर आर ऑल्सो मेनी कॉम्पिटिशन इन विच वी कैन पार्टिसिपेट I like about my school that in my school many activities are held and the education is also very good in my school the teachers are cooperative so loving caring patient understanding accommodative and cooperative teachers hard working teachers this is how children also observe their teachers this is all from teachers i feel privileged why teachers would fall in love I feel privileged to be part of Mount Literacy School. It has an outstanding teaching infrastructure along with intellectually stimulating environment. We have very supportive management and a very dynamic principal who always gives us freedom to make constructive changes in teaching methodology. The Panvita MLJS gives us a great platform to show our potential. We get good salary package, so financial needs fulfilled. our management and principal give opportunities to teachers to grow more and more through e learning good the staff and management of mount literacy school are very cooperative and loving we all work together team spirit even in this situation of pandemic we are getting continuous support from our school management and principal the school has given us several opportunities to enhance our hidden potential megha gupta mathematics teacher being an employee i feel secure here mlgs gives us complete freedom to use our potential we get good incentives supriya shape mlgs is truly a good platform for all the teachers as we get healthy teaching environment here teaching learning resources are very interesting and innovative our management is very supportive as we get immediately whatever we need for effective teaching archana gaur good and very efficient english teacher i being a, an employee of mlzs since last 3 and a half years found that the school is not only a learning platform for the students but also for the teachers professional development through regular trainings yes management of the institution is always supportive the school provides the latest technology and a great learning environment for everyone here we get endless opportunities to discover our hidden talents it is a great school and a great future for all of us priya grover primary mathematics teacher good these are also teachers views our school cares for its staff very well our management is very kind and cooperative even in this situation of pandemic we are getting complete support from school vandana verma english teacher mlz srurki is a good place to work and grow professionally the administration is very well organized the school trains teachers by organizing workshops i have amassed a lot of knowledge and grown as teacher in my years at this school lipika lekhi associated with the school as a primary teacher since the inception of the school so with this i definitely come to an end to the content that i wanted to share with all of you but definitely there is lot more to explore on this topic and every day something new some new challenge comes our way to we have to deal with it and that is the only way that we can make the children fall in love with the institution and with this i put an end to my words thank you very much for listening to me patiently i hope i could and i could address almost every aspect of why i love my school thank you everyone thank you so much ma'am it's been a privilege watching you do such a detailed analysis of school and the love it spreads around it well we at notebook are privileged to be a part of this great indian love story between the school the parents the teachers and particularly the students it is now my job to invite ochin bhattacharya back for the vote of thanks ochin we are really over time today so if you could quickly come back for the vote of thanks thank you sure i think uh, great session we had today really insightful but sir enjoyed listening to you about both the schools the one you studied in and 
of course uh, the one where you spend so many years of your working life and what really you know amazes me about doon school oh. is the kind of opulence elegance combined with simplicity that you just mentioned that really explains why doscos have made a name for themselves in all walk of life dr arunima chakraborty really like your presentation thank you so much i am so privileged and uh, i really love uh, whatever you are doing because i think that is basically what is required and what will be required in the days to come as a school leader sure ma'am thank you so nice much work. the pleasure is all ours yeah i think very rightly you mentioned the changes are just beginning and they will continue yeah yeah yeah, yeah. and uh, uh, deliberation on ai and uh, machine learning yes. i think these are very yeah. contemporary and pertinent topics yeah. which are going to change the entire educational landscape in years to come yeah definitely it will do it will and it has already done in some of the schools sure. across the globe of course yeah. of course it has yeah. it has and flip learning classrooms yeah i guess really yeah. really is order of the day yeah and classic classrooms are gone now we have good e videos e right. lectures so okay. the children first understand what is the concept they know what they are going to learn uh, and then learning becomes much easier and customized of course of course and hybrid learning online and offline combined because i honestly believe that irrespective of you know whatever whatever changes the pandemic has forced upon us schooling traditional schooling has its own set of advantages yeah yeah so i guess a perfect combination of online and offline yes is what all of us are looking forward to yes i think great presentation thank you again thank you thank you so much uh it's more all the best uh, to notebook the team notebook <laughs> thank you thank you so much uh miss molly mamen yeah i'm here really, <laughs> thank you so much really enjoyed listening to you thank you and, so uh, much no i think uh, pleasure is all ours ma'am really enjoyed it uh, and i yeah but uh, uh, thank you for giving me the opportunity thank you all ours yeah and i think what i really liked uh, about the way you enter explained the entire concept is with regard to how you actually utilize the entire virtual platform right yeah. so uh, not only about academics online classes that are going on of course across the length and breadth of the globe but also different activities whether that be virtual parents teachers meeting virtual assemblies international right. yoga day so all these things i think that really makes uh, your deliberation very interesting and no doubt about it i'm sure the audience also goes back with a lot of interesting takeaways because the audience composition as you are aware ma'am that we have here are eminent academicians principals so who are decision makers in schools in different parts of the world so i'm sure they go back enriched with a lot of good takeaways thank you so much thank you thank you ma'am uh, miss kavita agarwal uh, really like your uh, detailed presentation ma'am and lot of uh, thought provoking ideas you brought to the table as i carefully listened to you especially love from the perspective of all relevant stakeholders i think uh, that's that actually is the practical way to look at the topic in fact we at notebook when we were deliberating on selection of topics this is one topic when we were discussing it we also had discussed from perspective of all relevant stakeholders but as we had webinars on various other topics like alumni etc so i i restricted my uh, deliberation from mainly from students perspective but thank you so much for bringing this because this really adds a lot of value and i think a uh, very systematic approach you brought to the table maslow's hierarchy of need very interesting in fact uh, abraham maslow once he came up with this uh, paper in 1943 he later on added curiosity also in, in in as far as needs go so i think this has been one of the most interesting uh, concepts 
with regard to hierarchical needs, which has been used in various researches all over the world. So thank you. Really, I appreciate the fact that you brought this in and also the way you explain the topic from the perspective of all relevant stakeholders. And yes, academic, cultural, physical, emotional and aesthetic needs. Each one of them are important in their own way. Another thing which you also mentioned, and I think which is very practical uh, and no doubt about it, is the fact that teachers and head of institutions and their love for school and the fact that there are certain practical aspects like financial or job security or the kind of support that you're getting for management. I think these are indeed important and counseling session of parents. So I think uh, a great presentation from your side, ma'am. So with this, I'm sure our audience here also today enjoyed the session. Schools, we at Notebook honestly believe will always be our temples of learning. What we are going through right now across the world is unprecedented. It's the worst humanitarian crisis that we have seen in our lifetime. But I'm sure at some point of time, the overcast sky will give way to bright sunshine. And I'm sure the children will get back to school and their hustle and bustle in school corridors will again bring smile to lips of parents and teachers and all of us here. Yeah. With that note of optimism and love for schools that all of us have in our heart, I would like to sign up for the day. We look forward to see you in our next Together for Education webinar. Thank you. Take care and goodbye. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Goodbye. Thank you, Thank you so much. <laughs>